So I've set some things up ahead of time in Pro Tools. I've opened up four instrument tracks and labeled them kick, snare, hats for hi-hats, and claps. And I've inserted expand instruments on each track, each instrument track, and loaded in a different drum patch for each expand instrument. This way I can use a different kick drum, a different snare drum, different hi-hats for each drum part. This isn't necessarily the most efficient way to work, but when your plugin doesn't have individual outputs, this is a great workaround. This allows me to, for example, just program the kick on this track, the snare on this track, the hats on this track, and if I just want to run the kick, say, through some compression, that is not a problem. I just open up a compressor just for the kick, or add some EQ just for the snare drum. That way I can process each drum part individually, just as if I were multi-tracking drums. So I don't need these. I've also set up some regions and color-coded the regions ahead of time. Two bar regions. I've color-coded them so that when I'm in the MIDI editor that each drum note will come up its own individual color. It'll be easy for me to see them. So I've got a reddish pink for the kick drum, blue for the snare, green for the hi-hats, and brown for the claps. Make sure you've got a, your play in loop mode. And then let's jump over to the MIDI editor. In the MIDI editor, I want to turn on all the tracks so that I can see them all. And then I will select the one I want to edit from up here, this menu up here. And these are expand drum patch kits, so I know that they adhere to the general MIDI drum mapping standard, and I know that the kick drum is going to be on C1. The snare drum is going to be on D1. It's the snare I want to use. And on the third instrument, the hi-hats that I want to use are on F sharp and A sharp is the open hi-hat. So F-sharp is a closed hi-hat, A-sharp is the open hi-hat, and the claps are on D-sharp 1. There they are. So I'm going to start with the kick drum. So I'll go back to the kick drum, select my pencil tool, come over here, and select my grid edit mode. Sixteenth notes is the default, but you can use any of these resolutions in here. Triplets are a lot of fun. Eighth note and sixteenth note triplets produce a great sort of bouncy hip-hop feel to them. I'm going to work with eighth notes today because I'm going to be programming mostly eighth notes and it's a great beginner resolution to work with. And uh, well, let's make sure that I've got my two bars selected here. I want to do this so that I can go into loop mode and just have this continually loop back and forth. And I will start playing it. Here goes the play bar. And I will turn on the pencil here. And let's program in the kick drum on C1. I'll just put a four on the floor beat here, make things simple. And then I think I'll put another one on the upbeat, the end of four here. Nice. And then let's move to our snare drum. On D1, I'll put it on the 2 and the 4 to start off with. And we'll put an extra upbeat on the and of 3 here. Okay, sounds good. And then let's move to the hi-hats. We'll just go for a straight 8th note feel on the hi-hats. F sharp 1. That's easy enough. I just grab it and push it back up here if I miss the note. Okay. 
is my straight eighth note hi-hats. It sounds great. But uh, let's get an open hi-hat on the and of four here. So there's my closed hi-hat, and I'll just scoot it up here where I want it on the open hi-hat. And of four, there we go. And then let's drop some claps on the fours. And the clap was D sharp one, so put one there, put one here. And then let's get one on the upbeat of four on the second bar here as well. There it is, a little program beat. So now at this point, you've noticed all the velocity bars have come in here at exactly the same velocity, which doesn't make for a very dynamic performance. There's no emphasis on any of the beats. So what I'll do is I'll start with the kick drum here and hit it its velocity curves. We'll turn all of the tracks off so I can just see the kick drum. And then we'll come down here and we'll grab the first kick and scoot it up. And I'm doing all this in pencil mode because the pencil will change to a hand when I am over the right place of a note. And let's turn this upbeat down. And then let's do every other one here. Turn this one up, give this a little bit more emphasis. That sounds good. Let's move to the snare drum now. I'll put more emphasis on the fours. And I want to turn this one way down here. Hi-hats, lots of notes in the hi-hats. I don't need to do all of them. Again, I'll just go for the emphasis. I can also go up here and say select this one, open hi-hat, and this open hi-hat. So I'm gonna hold down, hold down shift and select this one. And then come down here and push those both up. Get more emphasis on the open hi-hats. And do that again here. On the three. Turn this one up. Sounds good to me. Now let's add uh, We'll add some extra nuances in here. Turn the tracks off. I'll just turn the snare drum on here. And let's change our grid resolution. And go 16th notes here. And we put a couple in here. Now again, we've got a situation here where it doesn't sound very natural. We'll go in here and grab these notes and pull them down. Create a little snare roll build up here. Awesome, that sounds great. Still sounds a little stiff because I'm, I haven't applied any quantize or anything right now. Everything is just snapped right to the grid. So let's go back to the edit window here and finish the speed up. So there are all the notes that I just programmed in. And now let's put some real time quantize on. I love the MPC grooves in here, so that's what we'll use for now. I will go down here and grab about MPC, let's say 55% um, on the MPC groove. And I'll go ahead and assign that to each of the tracks here. Notice I'm still in loop mode, I'm still auditioning everything I'm doing. 